teacher, dual major in art history and theater, and I'm the conference designer for tonight's show. All right, we're going to start with regarding the Belgian artist Magritte, the treachery of images. This is not a pipe. At first, this might be absurdly contradictory, and then for some, blatantly obvious. It's not a pipe. It's a drawing of a pipe. So the question offered to us at the end of the day remains intact, even if we are presented with a real working pipe. Would it still be a pipe? This is the question of the reality of abstraction and art. It's the difference between base existence and interpretation. The dictionary offer, offers to us its abstraction of abstraction, but here is my own that I've derived from my studies of artists such as Magritte. Let's use the most commonly abstracted form in the human culture, the face. We see it in our salt shakers, our cars, and home appliances. We are hardwired to see these faces, even though the representation seems to have little resemblance to one. A colon and an end parentheses in the text. How far of a distance is between that and this? Well, but ask anyone and they will tell you that both are a face. The difference lies in the balance between archetypal form and individualized structure. When you look at the simplistic face, do you wonder that face is politics? Do you wonder its hopes and dreams or what its favorite food is? No. It is allowed to be a symbol of face, presenting at most an emotion. The face of you or me has an individualized structure. It has a personality which, while offering more specificity, does this deeply universality and relatability. Now, you might think that the colon and end parentheses are as far from a natural face as one can get, with a form being identified as a face. And while some would agree, I would argue you can go one step further. F-A-C-E. There is nothing at all within the structuring of these symbols to give any essence of the form of a face, but immediately everyone recognized it. Words are wonderful and useful tools of communication, but words lie. Words communicate in an attributed essence, not an intrinsic one. Words are pure interpretation, as music is pure existence. Or as Michel Foucault wrote in his artistic critique of Magritte in his book, This Is Not a Pipe, put it, Take me for what I manifestly am. Letters placed beside one another, arranged and shaped, so as to facilitate reading, assure recognition, and open themselves to the most stammering schoolboy. I do not claim to swell, then stretch, pulling first the bull and then the stem of the pipe, I am no more than the words you are now reading. A day will come when by means of similitude relayed indefinitely along the length of a series, the image itself, along with the name it bears, will lose its identity. Campbell, 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 Campbell. Or to put it in layman's terms, that thing will happen when you say words so often that it no longer sounds like a word to you, but is revealed to be the collection of noises and sounds it really is. The next question for the establishment of art is one of objectively perceived perfection. What is the established unit of perfection that an art form can be most easily and readily analyzed by in a logical and factual manner? In almost all art forms, such as sculpture, drama, and painting, scientifically analyzed perfection comes from an ability to represent reality. The Trump Valley painting and sculpture work is a tenet from which artistic perfection tends to be measured in an objective way as well as the neoclassical standards sent by the French during the final Louis. It's only two art forms that standardized perfection isn't perceived as a replication of reality. Those forms are dance and music. Music isn't measured in this form due to its communication coming in a non-representational oral realm than the visual. The art form of dance is an extreme anomaly in the art world. It's the only art form that is settled almost entirely in the visual realm that isn't based objectively on its representation of reality. These two art forms, though somewhat dictated by their society in the ways of scales and signifier movements, tend to communicate an entirely universal language. Therefore, since dance and music are inherently barred from social specific vocabularies, they are deemed perfect when their rigors are used to communicate emotion in its purest, and some might say base form, and inspire. They inherently transcend the realm of words and exist as pure image. That's why the structure of the performance tonight is as it is. 
unmitigated light and the clarity of what some perceive to be the closest to objectively perfect music ever constructed a work of Bach, followed by an art form of dance to give a sensation deeper than those that words can describe, then my style of drama, which is hopefully being utilized to expose the treachery of its medium. So with that in mind, please enjoy tonight's production, part one, our paintbrush faders as designed by Carly Shiner, part two, dance, choreographed by Marsha Custer, and part three, a drama written and directed by myself. Thank you for your time, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> 